So here's another problem or another situation that we want to uh, analyze. Possibly it's going to show up in one of those questions, uh, incidents or or test. Um, now, um, first thing to know is that this is, let's say this is connected to a, no, that's not the wall, but this is your ceiling. Okay, so this is your ceiling and this is the wall. And then for whatever reason, you took a block or it took a body and then you connect it to a string. And this string is connected to this point right here. And another string is connected to the wall and then allow it to hang downward like this. So these are strings. Okay, so strings or cables, depending on how heavy the object is. So these are the strings. And then let's call this one string number one. And this is string number two. String number one is string number two. Now question is, let's solve for the tension. Okay, so let's figure out tension at number one and tension of number two. Tension one and tension number two, I'm assuming, okay, that it's strong enough and it will not break or it will not snap and cause any change in motion. So here in our case, there's no change in motion along the y-axis, so the acceleration is zero. There's no change in the state of motion along the x-axis, so acceleration is also zero, making it us aware that the summation of forces is equivalent to the mass m multiplied by zero, and any number multiplied by zero will definitely give us zero. So it means that the, the forces acting along the object is definitely our, is, is balance, or that will give us an answer that is zero. So if I'll draw my x and y coordinates right here, so there should be a dot. So we can transfer where the forces actually meet. So if I draw my dot right here, I would have somewhere as, let's say, F and G. Force of gravity is always going downward. And then there's another force right here, which is tension 1. So let's say this is my tension number 1. Well, let me just draw this one first. So let's have our tension number one. And then I have somewhere around here. That is tension number two. Tension one and tension number two. Okay, so that's this is your free body diagram. So you just tell the person grading your work, here's the free body diagram. That's it. Those are the forces acting on the body without considering the components. So this is just the force, the actual forces acting on the body, acting on the, the where forces will meet without the components. Next step is to redraw this force, this free body diagram. And let's further analyze the force as we all know that one of the force is acting not along the X or Y axis, but instead it's acting at the body at an angle. So I can say this one right here, which is our free force of gravity, which is mass multiplied by gravitational field strength. And this is our tension number two. And then we have tension number one. This time, if you notice, I only have one force that do have components. So this is T sub 2 Y, and this is T sub 2 X. Now, what is another information that is not provided to us, or provided to us, but we don't have it here in the figure? We have the angle theta, okay? So this one only have the angle, this right here. There's no angle, if there's angle, that's zero or 180. 
and anything that you multiplied with um, angle uh, sine 180 or zero is simply zero so there's no y component so everything is in your x x axis now we can say that this angle is also the same measurement right here so now we form our triangle so we have the x and y component for tension number two but we don't have any components for tension number one and since this one's measured along the x-axis so we can say that t sub 2 y is simply equivalent to t sub 2 sine theta and t sub 2 x is t sub 2 cosine theta okay. now we can further draw this one right here so we're going to analyze it here later. Now this one is your Fg, which is your mass times G. And then you have different forces. That is blue. I have my blue right here, which is my T sub 2 Y. And this is T sub 2 X, which is T sub 2 cosine theta, while this one is T sub 2 sine theta. And on the other side, we have force T sub 1. T sub 1. Okay. So T sub 1 is t sub 2 x cosine theta okay t sub 2 cosine theta so let's express our answer in terms of m g and angles so the first thing that we should analyze is your y-axis so we can say right away that summation of forces along your y-axis is simply equal to zero as we already established that relationship here Next, positive, force, uh, positive forces going up, so that is T sub 2Y, negative going down, which is our FG equals 0. And T sub 2Y is simply T sub 2 sine theta, while our force of gravity is M multiplied by the gravitational field strength G. Moving it to the other side of the equation and then simplifying it further, we know that T sub 2 is simply mg divided by sine theta. So that will be our value for t sub 2. Okay, so that's your t sub 2. So we have our answer for t sub 2. So now how do we solve for the value of t sub 1 or tension 1? Uh, I haven't used color red. Let's use color red. Summation of forces along the x-axis is also equivalent to zero, as we have already established that relationship earlier. So anything going to the right is positive, anything going to the left is negative. So we have t sub 2x minus t sub 1, and that will give us zero. Okay, so t sub 2 is simply t sub 2 cosine theta minus t sub 1 equals 0. So if I'll place this to the other side of the equation or just move it to the other side, so we'll have t sub 1 is equivalent to t sub 2 cosine theta. But we all know that t sub 2 is simply mg sine theta. So we can place it here that t sub 2 is mg over sine theta multiplied by cosine theta. So here we go, cosine theta. Here right away, we all know that T sub 1 is M of G multiplied by cosine theta over sine theta 
Some of you might still want to simplify this. Yes, you can further simplify this. What is cosine over sine? Okay, so we can basically change this into a different rule. It's still going to be the same value. So t sub 1, what is cosine over sine? That is simply cotangent theta. Or what is cotangent? So we can just say, take the reciprocal of tangent. So we can further say that tangent, so T1 is also mg divided by tangent theta. So this possible answer, this possible answer, or you can also use this, but most of the time we don't use the cotangent as a function. Uh, the cotangent function in terms of expressing our final answer. But just in case, if there's a question about it, you can always use this value. So this is how simple this question is. Hope you enjoy it. And then again, if you have any suggestion or whatever problems you want me to go over, please don't forget to put some comments in the comment section. Thank you.